Hey, what's up, guys? Tukey here, back again with another episode of my Seattle Sonics, my league. It's just, you can't say my league with emphasis. I suppose you can. It just doesn't sound right. What's going on? How the hell are you? It's good to see you. If you're not doing well, well, I hope that me screwing up a franchise can help you out just a little bit. It is draft day yet again for the Sonics. However, I have a couple of your comments that I want to get to before we go through the rest of this offseason. First up, Elliot Russo. It'd be easier if you sorted by who you had bird rights on. You'd find your free agents much faster. Thank you for that. I will try to remember that that's an option. Thank you. BMS, AJ Marsh, and AJ Marsh, and turn up the draft class quality. Here's the thing, and I wanted to do this. Uh, in fairness, I actually think it's it's looking relatively okay in terms of the sliders that we have for draft class quality right now. And I'll show you by going to, it's going to take forever to scroll through because of all the extra teams. Not really, we're already there. All players, I went one, one over too far. So the highest rated players right now in the game are Giannis and Anthony Davis at a 95. Luka Doncic is up there as well. The highest rated computer generated player is a 93 in Nelson Fletcher. So, I mean, while the second round picks might not be working out, how often do second round picks really work out? I guess the argument could be that the quality dips after the first five to 10 picks or so, and you might be right on that. I think at the very least though, with the current sliders that we have, we are ending up getting legitimate superstars, though. I mean, it would have been nice if we ended up with Nelson Fletcher. Uh, we also have Noel Cousins, who is right there at above a 90. So, I mean, there are a couple of players who are at least hitting the mark. Tyler Davis is another one who's at least up there. So, I guess if the argument is that we're not seeing enough uh, talent throughout the entire draft and that the rest of the first round needs to be a little bit better, I suppose I agree with that. But at the very least, you know, the high-end talents are up there. And, you know, the, the talent level, the difference between the elites and the very good is quite noticeable as you scroll down through. That said, oh, also, for training camps, always go with untapped potential. I think I have to disagree with that. I think I do. Because what is the point if someone... I would rather make a player better now. Like, what is the drastic difference between an A- minus and an A? How much is that going to affect somebody improving tenfold, especially if they're 23, 24 years old? I think I'd rather just give them the attribute, attribute boost. Let me know if I'm entirely wrong on that, but logic would dictate at a certain point there would be diminishing returns on using untapped potential for training camps. Weird for me to say. That said, let's get into today's draft. We have a number one overall pick for the first time, if not the first time in God knows how long, and the decision ended up being pretty straightforward for you guys. The vote was down to Kim Kirimoglu and AJ Marsh, and AJ Marsh won in a landslide. An absolute landslide. It was not close. So we will be adding Marsh to the board. Again, right now, 75 overall with that 96 potential. So I don't think we're going to have to worry about untapped potential for Mr. Marsh. He is the pick, no doubt about it. And he joins the likes of Dario Golob, Hopkins, Dorikas, and Wesley. It's looking good. Proven scorer, Marsh led the nation scoring last year at Wake Forest by averaging over 23 points. Beautiful. The Hornets will end up taking an off-the-board pick in Brandon Singletary. I'm kind of surprised at that. I want to see where the other two end up going, but I guess I'm not all that concerned because we have our own business to attend to. This could be a very exciting year for the Sonics. Of course, we won 19 games last year, and things are looking pretty damn good for us. Now, the question is whether or not we can end up finding somebody who's half-decent in this draft from this point on. Wish we had information on Wilson King and Reuben Cobb. We do not. In terms of the Draft Express rankings, Sean McKinney is still on the board. Jimmy Powell is also there. We almost have complete info on him. McKinney, do we know exactly what your potential is? I'm sure we do. 83 is not bad. I think I'd rather take a younger player who has a bit more time to develop. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's not too bad. I mean, 21, nearly a 70. It's a very nice overall right now. That's not too bad. 
Six foot eight as well. I'm sure we could move him over to guard if we had to. Of course, right now the overall team depth is certainly looking much better. There is Jimmy Powell as well. Of course, we're not going to be able to see the potential number, but shooting guard, point guard, I mean, there is the argument to make that we could use one other person there in terms of depth. I think we will have to go with somebody up top one way or another. Uh, Wallace Potter is an obvious no. I know obviously we can sort by potential. I wanted to see who was still left on the board. Uh, so it's under aggregates. What do we got? So a couple of B-plus potential guys here are currently listed as the highest, featuring McKinney as undoubtedly the best one in the bunch. Gatons or Gattons was also there. Yeah, so right now it's looking like McKinney is going to be the best option. I suppose it is down to him or Jimmy Powell. Wallace Potter is not worth drafting at all. Carl Thomas, I wish we had a bit more info on. I think it's got to be one of those two that are remaining. And I would imagine that McKinney... It's just a matter of what, what Powell's potential is. And if we want to go for the shot in the dark there, he is three years younger. The overall will be a little bit weaker. It's just, I mean, you see the badge, raw prospect. It's what he is. We just don't know what that potential is. The playmaking is not bad. The mid-range scoring is okay. Perimeter defense is all right. I mean, it does say B plus potential. I don't, I mean, I don't know if we can necessarily trust it because we don't know what the full number is, but it could be nice. B plus for McKinney. Man, A plus. Oof. I mean, having another sharpshooting option like Sean McKinney could be exactly what this team needs. That could be exactly what we need. The playmaking is a bit low. The defense is terrible. The athleticism is terrible. He's just a legitimate sharpshooter. Oh, it's it's got to be one of these two, and I'm not sure what the right choice is here. I'm really not. I'm leaning towards Jimmy Powell and that amazing headband just because, again, he's three years younger and would have more time to develop. But Sean McKinney is a lights-out three-point shooter. Averaged 19 points last year. 458 in terms of three-pointers last year. I'm going to keep looking at McKinnon here. Or McKinney, I should say. Robert Ory as the starting ceiling. Can hit any shot. Before, I mean, just, yeah, we know. Dude, he's, he's rough everywhere else with the exception of shooting threes. That's pretty much it. Oh, God, or do we go for Jimmy Powell where it's a complete shot in the dark? That is... Ah, this is a rough choice. I didn't want a rough choice to start. I can't imagine... I mean, again, it's just, what is the overall for Powell? He's three years younger. He apparently has the same potential as McKinney, even though we don't know the exact number. It's just, will Jimmy Powell have a higher ceiling? But if he's a low enough overall, I doubt that he will. I mean, he is listed with that C potential. So, I mean, I would expect him to be low to mid-60s. I mean, for example, if he's like a 62, what, can we trust that he'll make up seven overall points in three seasons, if not more? As it is, we already do have a lights-out three-point shooter, and that might mean Sean McKinney is that much better for what we need. Ah, Powell, you might screw me over here. I don't like the fact that McKinney's only 20. Sean McKinney. We're doing it. Sean McKinney. Welcome aboard. You might be a one-trick pony, but it could work out relatively well for us, or at least I hope he was expecting to be a first-rounder. We end up taking him with the first pick of the second round, and that is it for this draft. Again, time will tell if we made the right choice there. Singletary was a 74. What was his, uh, oop, yep, yep, nope, yep, yep, there we go. Okay, now we're, now we're looking good. Now we're cooking with gas. What is that potential? 89. Yeah, I think we made the right choice. Kermoglu, or Kerimoglu, ended up going to the Suns, or the Hawks. Ortega went to the Suns, and Kim went all the way down to a five with Portland. I want to take a look here. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Well.
Well, that's that's a swift kick to the groin to start this episode now, isn't it? Both of them were 67 overalls. Oh, God. That really sucks. Seven. Oh, McKinney, no. No. I'm not even going to be able to see Powell's potential. Yeah, that, oh, God. Okay, that sucks. That sucks. A lot. Holy shit. And I said I wish I could have seen the information on Wilson King. I really wish I had seen the information on Wilson King. For the record, I mean, you look at the rest of the first rounders. I mean, you start to dip into the high 60s, low 70s. Again, if that's the argument that there's just not enough talent throughout the draft, I don't necessarily disagree. It, it's almost set up in a more NHL 19 style where really like the top five are like, oh, okay, yeah, you could see them being a bit more ready. But, you know, again, if that is the argument, I kind of agree. You know, the high-end talents can probably be a little bit better. Even though, you know, if they have the right potential, they can end up being pretty decent. Uh, we will be signing both of them. Dorikas, of course, will also be joining the team, which is a massive boost to this squad. This team just got a whole lot better. As far as our team options, Black and Kato, you two are going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. So we're good on that front. AC Galloway ends up staying with his club, another player who we probably should have ended up with at some point. Qualifying offers. Arnold is going nowhere, I would hope. <laughs> Please don't leave. LeBrian Nash, he can leave. Of course, he's not an actual member of the team. Dario, of course, is staying. And everybody... Nope, Byron Wesley. And that's why you check. Uh, Byron Wesley will also be staying. So those are the three that we're going to worry about here. And as far as what we're doing, I think, I mean, yeah, we're good, right? <clears throat> Again, excuse me. I think we're good on this front. I think we're all right. There we go. Now I know we can check that. Oh, God, we have to sign. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Dario. Oh, thank God he's an RFA. I just noticed. Sparks. Sparks. Edmund. Edmund. It says we have no cap room. I don't believe you. Uh, Edmund, buddy, let's, uh, let's work something out here. You're not good, but god damn it, don't I need you for the, uh, for the bench. If you leave, I'll be very upset. And Dario, give him all of the money. Please, I hope to god that's enough. I hope to god that's enough. He is still restricted, though, thank god. So the only guy that I really have to worry about losing here is Sparks, otherwise we should be fine. And Arnold... <laughs> wants to get paid. I do not blame him. Uh, we'll go ahead and send that through too. So we should be good on that front. Thank God. Uh, Sparks is coming back. Dario is coming back. Arnold is coming back. Beautiful. I will uh, have the old cap hold on Wesley. We'll renounce rights for pretty much everybody. I'm going to go back through this. Yeah, Bremer can leave. Hendricks can leave. Gregory and Nash can leave. Sparks goes nowhere. Wesley is a hold. Arnold Dario, perfect. So we should be good moving forward. I'm feeling pretty good about this team. It's just a matter of keeping everybody together. Uh, with Wesley, he was fine, right? He would have been an RFA otherwise. So I'm just, I have to double check. Yeah, Byron Wesley. He is listed as an RFA. Okay, we should be fine. I'm still just going to send him an offer just to try and get that over and done with. And we should be okay. Other than that, I think we're good. I don't think we were at risk of losing anybody else. As everybody is going to sign, and we are good to go. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's move forward again to the beginning of free agency. We will match the offer for Byron Wesley. Fine by me. He is going absolutely nowhere. I'm still just kicking myself over how that draft went. I I had a feeling we should have come for the younger player. Pretty upset about it. But oh, what are you going to do? All right. What are you going to do? Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we have to uh, do with this roster. So we still have Arnold at point guard. Of course, we moved over Bohannon to shooting guard. Kato still here as well. We have Sparks, Black, McKinney, and McDaniels, who is still, again, going to be out until the start of the season. But we're looking pretty good on that front. Overall, we're looking good. Dorikas is an 88 legit, which is amazing. And there was a comment as well saying, hey, you should use untapped potential for him. But 
I mean, it, it might for him it might make sense, I guess. I mean, here, if we were to take a look too at what his current potential is, because I'm intrigued. It is still an okay, so he's yeah, he has pretty much capped out, but you would have seen across the league, I mean, untapped potential might get him to Anthony Davis level, but regardless, he is still going to be absolutely ridiculous. So, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Right? Right. I think we're good. So, as far as signing anybody for this roster, I mean, we're pretty much good. I mean, we're, we're going to have to sign a player or two. I'm not too worried about it. I'll wait for the game to be like, hey, you got to sign somebody. And I'll be like, eh, no, I don't. Let's just go to player progression. And we should be okay. I'm excited to see, too, once we get into editing the roles and getting players into their best overall, you know, for their position... I'm, I'm really excited to see how good this squad ends up being. Darikis again, is a legitimate 88. Bohannon's up to an 87. Absolute monster. Arnold's also up to an 87. Cameron Black, an 84. Dario is an 82. Not too bad, though, for our first ever pick. Murray Hopkins is a legitimate 79. McDaniels is an 80. You have AJ Marsh at a 73. Sparks at a 73. Wesley at a 71. McKin uh, McKinney at a 68. And Cato at a 65. Is that a playoff team? Probably not, right? Probably not. But I'm still feeling pretty good about this. I don't think we're going to be, as I think it signed Sheldon Jinx for us. Let me double check the roster. I don't think we're going to be bottom feeders this year. At least we shouldn't be. Uh, okay, yeah, it's just for the, uh, never mind, sorry. I got caught up, I know exactly what's happening. Summer League! Yeah, everyone's favorite, the Summer League as we'll skip through this as quickly as possible, pretty much, and see what this roster ends up looking like. We will auto-generate rookies, of course, and training camp. So the big question here, whether or not we used untapped potential or whether or not we uh, look elsewhere. So, for example, Arnold right now still listed as an A potential. Would it be worth bumping him up to an A+, plus? maybe? But he's also 25 years old, so would it really be worth it at that point, how much better is he going to get? I mean, my assumption, I can't say that I know with certainty. My assumption, though, is that he'd had probably two more years of developing. So uh, maybe that could be worth it. Getting Bohannon up to an A+, I think, would be worth it. I think I'll agree with you on that one. Getting Bohannon up to an A+, would be very nice. Yeah, McDaniels at an A-. minus. McKinney, McKinney ended up being a B-. minus. That really hurts. Sparks at a B-. minus. Cameron Black at an A-. minus. Dario's a B+. Plus. Marsh is an A, and Dorikus is an A. <sighs> Maybe Bohan and Marsh and Dorikus get them all up to, uh, to A pluses. Is that the worst way to go? One could argue maybe bumping Cameron Black up to an A or Arnold up to an A plus. But I could, uh, I think, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Bohan and Marsh and Dorikus. That might be the best way to go. I'm not entirely sure I mean granted there's no guarantees of them going up to an A plus though but trying to get them there might be the best way to approach this otherwise it would be uh, it's actually a tough call I mean otherwise I'd probably try to improve Darrell's defense maybe even the physical ratings the IQ could go up a little bit, too. So, see, I'm torn between potential when it makes sense as far as, like, okay, well, this player's a little bit too far gone. I mean, I guess if we look at the attributes here, I mean, Arnold right now with that 92 potential for an A, I would assume it's a 95 for an A+. plus, But I can't say with certainty. So, actually, let me uh, let me double-check this here because we technically don't have an A+. Plus. There's somebody that has an A+, plus near us. Connor Nash. So what is that potential, buddy? What is it? 94. Okay, so yeah, Jesus, I could probably get both of or everybody up that we wanted to then. So Bohannon right now, in terms of potential, is at, what are you at for a specific number here? I mean, I would assume a 93 is good enough. Marsh, I'm sure, could also hit it, and then Dorikas. Like I said, I'm very torn between trying to improve individual attributes or just improving the potential. I think we're gonna we're gonna use untapped potential though on Bohannon, Marsh, and Dorikas. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it, and we'll hope for the best on that front. 
So, Dorikus, there you go. He is still an A potential, unfortunately, but it'll get him closer to being a bit more of a monster. Bohannon is up to an A+. And Marsh is up to an A plus as well. So whether or not that's the right choice, I mean, it's tough to say that I feel bad about, you know, getting somebody up to an A plus potential. It's just whether or not somebody else could have, uh, you know, could have used those extra, you know, those extra grades because I am a little bit worried in terms of player happiness, the morale, and not wanting to piss somebody off and just making sure that we can keep this team together. Uh, so really we need an extra point guard and an extra shooting guard and we should be fine. So free agency, free agency. Um, I was going to say, like, there's no way he's still a free agent. He's not. Uh, Benjamin Levins. Ben Levs. Benny, buddy, we need you. Thank you. Shooting guard wise, uh, Barry Fowler. Barry, Barry, Barry. Welcome. We need you. And uh, for the hell of it, we'll sign an extra point guard as well. Let's go for Carlos Gomez. My boy Carlos. There you go. All right, so we should be good on that front. To next season we go. We need to hope for a happy, healthy team. No injuries. And hopefully this could be a very, very good year for us. So in terms of this roster, let's take a look here. Dorikas is technically better as a power forward. 89 overall, but he is the tallest player on the team. He's technically an 88 overall at center. So it probably makes sense to leave him. Uh, again, in terms of... In terms of height here, actually. Here, let me sort by uh, this here. Unless I wanted Murray Hopkins as our starting center, but the problem is, if I move Dorikas to power forward, where the hell does Dario play? So, yeah, Dorikas is going to stay at center. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Murray Hopkins as well, with his height, it's either him or Wesley as the backup center. So I want to take a look here. Hopkins is a slightly better power forward than center. Same for both players, really. Uh, and technically, I could move both to center anyway. And maybe just, I mean, because right now at Power 4, we're going to have Dario and Marsh, and that way Marsh can get some playing time. So I think having Dorikas, Hopkins, and Wesley all listed at center is a pretty good way to go. And then Power Forward-wise, let's take a look here. So Dario, again, is best at Power Forward. So that works out quite well. I think, again, I could edit Byron Wesley to have Power Forward as a secondary option. I'm actually going to do that for Dorikas as well. Just to make sure... God, the player faces in this game are a fucking nightmare. Uh, just to make sure that everybody's good to go. And, you know, give to give the, I guess, auto rotation a bit more of a uh, bit more leeway. So, Wesley, let's also, let's also add power forward as your secondary role. Again, the faces are just nightmarish. Look at that goatee. Beautiful goatee, uh, Byron. I was going to call you Murray. It's, it's cool. Don't worry about it. You're on this team. I love you. I appreciate you. Just get the job done. Uh, let's see. Marsh. What are we dealing with here? So he is... I mean, technically just as good of a center. Jesus, he's well-rounded. So he could play forward, power forward, or center. No problem. No problem. So we'll keep him a power forward. He'd technically be listed as a sharpshooter. As a forward... With that, uh, he actually has pretty good three-point shooting. At least open three-point shooting. Face-up four as a power forward, face-up center as a center, of course. Uh, the only thing that I'm tempted to do, I guess really having him be a forward might be the best way to go, at least as a secondary position. He was one overall point higher. So, AJ, I'll add a small forward to you. Of course, we know we can put up points. He did so in college, and then, of course, Dario's good to go. So now the big question is uh, up top here. What are we looking at? Obviously, Gomez and Ben Levins, I'm going to do my best to make sure they don't play. So Darrell Arnold, let's see, right now is an 87 point guard, 87 shooting guard, so we'll leave him as a point guard for now. Uh, we'll take a look at Mr. Bohannon 
who is an 87 guard and 85 point guard. Okay, so we'll leave him the, you know, the same way. Shooting guard, point guard setup. It's not too bad. Kato, still listed as a 65 shooting guard. What are you as a point guard? Ooh, only a 61. So yeah, he's technically a better forward than he is a guard. But still, we'll leave him as a shooting guard and have small forward be the secondary option. Barry Fowler, of course, we don't have to worry about. He's just a random dude on the team. So then we get down to the four forwards on the team. Cameron Black right now listed as an 84 there, down to an 81. So I think, again, forward by far. I mean, that's where he's going to play, and we'll have shooting guard as a secondary option, I think. Yeah, that'll be the way to handle that. McDaniels, again, still out for two to four months. It's a pretty big loss to start the year, but is technically a 78 as a forward, and I think we'll just be leaving him there as it is. Edmund Sparks, right now listed as a 73. I think, again, same thing. Leave him as a small forward and a guard. And McKinney is a 68 forward, 65 guard. All right, so same thing there for Sean. We'll add guard as a secondary option just to try and get him a little bit more playing time. But odds are, I mean, he'll get a decent amount of playing time, of course, because of the limited bench that we're going to roll with. So right now, Arnold is the only listed point guard, but obviously someone like Kato, uh, or really Bohannon, will end up playing point guard when Arnold's on the bench, at least ideally. And that way, someone like Kato can move in a shooting guard. You can move Black over, McDaniels, Sparks, or McKinney. There are options. Perhaps, you know, a little bit of point guard depth would be nice. Certainly not denying that. I'm a little bit worried that I don't have somebody like Kato set up, though, as a backup point guard. I think that could hurt us a little bit and maybe could run the risk of having Arnold or Bohannon kind of run themselves into the ground. I suppose we'll keep an eye on it. But overall, this squad's looking pretty good. I'm fairly happy with what we uh, have going here. Of course, we brought in Mike D'Antoni. And the question of whether or not we run the second, uh, the seven seconds system, it would make a lot of sense. Dorikas at center's kind of left out, but overall system proficiency right now is four star, which will be by far the highest. I mean, that is our starting lineup right there. Is there anything else that's close? Balanced is at three and a half. Kind of leaves Dario out in the cold, but everybody else can run with that all day. Uh, another three and a half for pace and space. Kind of leaves Black out of the equation a little bit, but this team does have some really good three-point shooters. Another three and a half for perimeter centric, which again leaves Black out of the question, but it's not too bad. So we do have options. I think we will go with seven seconds, though, just because that is the most well-rounded approach for us. Although, I can't help but think maybe balanced would be the best way to go. But we'll see how this goes to start the year. Again, we'll run with the high-tempo offense. And hopefully this can uh, hopefully this can work out. I mean, as it is too. I wanted to say we don't have the best rebounding team, but with Dorikas here now, that's not exactly a fact anymore. I mean, he, he is half decent, but I think we'll stick with that. Again, we were talking about that a lot heading into the season as far as what we look to do with this team. So let's see. We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 right now as far as players that we are using so bench depth will run with 11 the playbook uh we can run the rockets playbook that's fine uh, how much a player's adaptability to coach system affects his minutes played uh yeah 50 50 across the board there is fine i'm gonna bump up bench utilization a little bit more uh zone defense we'll bump that up a little bit but not by a ton uh, running plays, that's going to be... We're going to drop that a little bit because, to be honest, if we're running a faster-paced offense, we're not going to have to run plays that much. It's just more so, hey, get open and shoot the damn thing. Help defense at a 50. D debatable, yet again, as far as how that's set up, but for now, I'm feeling all right about it. Uh, we are... Oh, God, how the hell do we decide here? I think, again, Arnold, Bohannon, Dorikas is an absolute monster... We have a lot of different options for how we want to set this up. I'm honestly not sure. If we look at Dorikas, 
Let's see, shot close, open mid-range. It has a hell of a mid-range shot. I'm just trying to decide who we want to run this offense through. I mean, Dorikas is pretty damn good. We know Dario's pretty damn good as well. Uh, Black isn't our offensive specialist. Bohannon's looking really good. It has to be through Arnold, first and foremost. He is the main man. But from there, it's just, do we go to Bohannon? Do we go down to Dario or Dorikas? That's kind of a tough call. But Dario is a bit of a beast. I suppose we shouldn't have Dorikas in the top three because we're not really focused on getting the ball down low that much. But going to Arnold, Bohannon, and Dario could work. I kind of want to get Dorikas a little bit more involved, though. I don't know if we're going to sim the full season, or maybe if we're struggling, we'll change this up anyway. I'm going to start with those three first, though. Offensive focus is going to be play through star. Offensive tempo, shoot at will. Offensive rebounding, uh, just get back. Defensive focus can be neutral. Defensive aggression can be neutral. Defensive rebounding, some crash, others run. I agree with that. Again, it sucks that we don't have McDaniels. But if we look here... Uh, questionable these minutes maybe we could look to bump up the minutes for everybody but that's not too bad I mean we do have a bit more of a reliable bench Kato will get seven minutes a game McKinney at nine which isn't too bad again continued debatable points over how this team is set up the rotation what we could look to do maybe some starters deserve to be playing a little bit more and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that the plan went ahead, though, in that Arnold, if he's out, Bohannon moves up, which is perfect. And then someone like Sparks will step in, rarely Kato. So that's looking pretty good. I think if we're, if we're starting to lose, I'll bump up the minutes for our starters. But there is also the problem <clears throat> of there being a general sense of wear and tear with a couple of these guys. Especially, too, if you look at the uh, the injury history for Darrell Arnold. In fairness, it's been more... I think it's been... Because he missed some time. He missed more time than just a calf cramp, didn't he? But the ankles are a little bit of a concern. The knee is a little bit of a concern. And if we look to Bohannon, a couple of yellows. I think the main point is... I know that we've kind of worn down some of our players... Like, some of them are maybe just a tad bit more injury-prone than others at this point. Jesse McDaniels has a bad knee, for example. Go figure. But I think we're okay for the moment, I hope. Team training, I just kind of set up once and left it, so we know that we're good on that front. If I were to look at the preseason power rankings, are we still dead last? I would expect us to be. We are. But you know what? I think they're underrating us just a little bit. Just a bit. Now, if I hit play game, which I'm not going to do, I wanted to see... I want to see... Is there not a general team overall? That was my main question. I guess there isn't. Let's do this, shall we? I at least want to get this season underway. I want to see how good of a team we are. I mean, you look at the squad at this point. We do win our first game of the season. Oh, baby. Two in a row to start the year. We end up getting crushed by the Seals. That's a decent start. I'll take a 3-2 and two start to the season. It's our best start to a season ever. So it's pretty decent. I guess one could argue, too, whether or not a G League assignment would be, would be necessary for somebody, but we'll hold off on that for now. As we drop a couple of games, holy high scoring against Brooklyn. Defense, what is defense? 5-5 five and five to kick things off. I am going to second-guess... Every single decision that I make as we're down to five and eight. And if we lose the next two or so, I'd definitely kind of stop the progress and double check. Okay, we're slipping up a little bit. How are we doing? How are we doing? So Arnold's playing well. One could argue whether or not he deserves a bit more time. Dorikas is also playing well. Uh, if we if we auto rotate that. Just to see what happens. Sparks is on a cold streak. I just don't know if certain players are getting a bit more in terms of the minutes. Uh, let's drop that down a little bit. How drastic of an effect is that? Let's let's go with that. Let's get 
let's get our main guys out there a little bit more frequently. We have a couple of more games in November against Boston, Milwaukee, and Hartford slash Connecticut. We end up beating the Celtics. We end up losing to Milwaukee. Can we beat the Journeyman? Yes, we can. So 8-11 and 11 to begin the year through the opening two months of the season. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Boston, too, second right now in the power rankings, so... It's a nice little win for us. We are not dead last, by the way. OKC with that star player we missed out on. It's looking good. I mean, it's looking better, right? Looking good is a relative, relative terms here. But we're not dead last. We have nearly cracked the top 30 in terms of the power rankings. I think we're going to sim one more month, although I do want to take a look. How close is McDaniels? Four to six weeks still. Damn. Damn. And that's, you know what? Actually, man, we're without McDaniels. We might be that much better when he gets back. We should be. As we end up losing by four to the Hornets, we are crushed by the Magic. We lost to the Wizards. Now I'm getting concerned. Now I'm getting concerned. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Start winning games. Okay. Nope. 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 I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Not one bit. What could be changed? Not much could really be changed. I just don't like that we're losing games. Not one bit. I think again, we're gonna drop the bench utilization by a little bit more. Uh, lineup performance factor. I wanna bump that up to about a 52. Not a 52, but a 50 as well. I always hit the wrong button there. There we go, we'll do that. So Darikas gets more playing time. Black and Dario, it drops a little bit. Hopkins will get a lot more playing time out of that. Kind of drops what Kato and McKinney are doing. But I, we need our star players out there. And maybe that's the wrong call. Maybe I should just trust the process, of course. But let's see. Can we get back to our winning ways, please? As I am concerned with every single loss. Oh, God. We have not won in the month of December. Oh, come on. Why are we losing this many games, boys? There we go. We finally get our first win of the month. And then immediately lose to Washington and Portland and Milwaukee. We should we should be better than this, guys. What's going on? What is wow? One win through the month of December and say goodbye to all the optimism. What a god awful run of games. We are so much better than that. Dorikas being day to day hurts, but come on, we have to be better than that, right? I don't understand why we're not. Never mind, I now understand why we're not. Arnold's out for a week or two with an ankle sprain. AJ Marsh is also hurt. That would, uh, that would kind of explain why we've been struggling, wouldn't it? Damn it. So I did change a couple of things up, mainly just, you know, working with the injuries, drop the bench a little bit to avoid having guys like Fowler and Gomez play. It is still very frustrating, though, for us to have struggled this badly when the team depth has improved. I mean, you think of those injuries. I mean, sure, we get McDaniels back, but you think of those injuries. I would have liked to have hoped that this team would have been a little bit better despite the injuries. I mean, that's what this was. Our depth finally took a step up. Uh, Dorikas will be back any day now, so in fairness, I'll probably sim this game against the Lakers, which we do end up winning. And uh, we'll see if Dorikas is good to go. Hopefully he is. And uh, he is still day to day. So I think he's going to miss this game as well. Unless we can uh, just sim to date here. Uh, I guess sim through date. He might end up missing that game as well. We do get back to back wins though. So, I mean, me tinkering around seems to have helped somewhat. Dorikas is still out. And Dario is gassed right now, but that could just be a, an after-game deal. So we'll sim up to the fifth before a back-to-back. -back. And again, hopefully Dorikas is good to go. Still day-to-day. -day. A lot of goddamn days at this point, buddy. Let's sim this game against the Knicks. Hopefully we don't end up with an injury. Hopefully we end up with a win. We do. Okay, so now three straight wins to begin January. Huh. Now I'm wondering if I should have uh, been a little bit more aggressive in terms of 
you know, changing things around. I'm not entirely sure. Let's sim through this game. Against the Jazz, we do end up losing. But Dorica should be back here for this game against Portland. At least I'd like to hope. Please? Pulled lower back muscle, still day to day. Shit. All right, well, we're, we're starting to pick up some momentum, so maybe we can make this work. We'll sim through this game as well. And we do lose back-to-back -back after winning three straight. We are up to 12 wins. I would have hoped for a hell of a lot more than 19 wins like we had last year, though. The addition of Dorikas, the continued improvement of some of these players, we should have been better than this. We can still salvage the season, though. Dorikas is back. AJ Marsh will be back soon. So we need to bump up the bench depth to 10. And let's uh, let's auto-rotate there. So Dorikas is back in. McDaniels is starting. Hopkins, of course, on the bench is the sixth man. We have Sparks, Wesley McKinney, and Cato. Perfect. Perfect. I'm, I actually don't even know how I feel about McDaniels' minutes. I suppose they could be a little bit higher. It gets Sparks in perhaps maybe a little bit more than it should. But overall, I'm feeling okay about it. And then again, Bohannon's our main man up top right now. So we'll continue to go day to day. Actually, I'll sim through the next two games against the Suns and Thunder. We lose to the Suns, and oh my god. So three straight wins, four straight losses. It really sucks, man, because we've hit that point where it's very disappointing to lose. Very disappointing to lose. This team has some expectations out, and who knows? Maybe it's going to take a little bit of time for them to realize, like, oh yeah, shit, we're supposed to win games now. Maybe it's going to take them a little bit of time to realize that. I don't know, but hopefully we can figure something out here. Uh, again, the bench depth will go up a little bit. Maybe, I mean, again, as far as running plays, maybe I'll bump that up by a little bit. Go to like a 63, bump up our zone usage a little bit. Maybe even bump up the help deep. <sighs> I'm not sure what I want to do here. I'm really not sure. I'm going to bump that up a little bit more. Bench utilization, I'm going to drop a little bit. And I think we're okay. Although, if we, uh, I always hit the wrong button. If we do that. So again, AJ March is now back in the fold. Offensively, we should be going through Bohannon, Dario, and Dorikas with these injuries right now. And not Hopkins, Dorikas. There we go. Play through Star, shoot at will. All that's still good. And Darrell will be back very soon. Although,. Let me do that again, just to make sure, since we changed up the emphasis. We'll sim through this game against the Spurs. We end up getting a six-point win. Is Darrell Arnold back? He is. Beautiful. He is beautiful, and he is back, which is beautiful. So again, we need to bump up the bench depth. And we'll drop the utilization by a little bit more. So again, the offense is going to be Arnold, Bohannon, and I might go with Dorikas here. Maybe that'll be the best way to go. So let's go Arnold with Bohannon and Dorikas. That works. Gamble Auto uh, reassign. Actually drop the minutes by a lot. I know the bench depth went up. Let me drop the utilization here though. There we go. Get those numbers back up. Those minutes. So McKinney is not getting a ton of playing time at this point, but I suppose that's okay. Let's see right now. So Hopkins is getting 27 minutes as our sixth man, which is fine. McDaniel's at 21. Murray's actually playing pretty well right now. I think that'll work. Again, there's the fine line between how much do we want our guys to play, our stars to play, and when do we get to the point of potentially running them into the ground We'll sim, let's go to February 1st here. Hopefully we can avoid injuries. We end up playing the Raptors and getting the win. So 15 and 28 on the air. There's no doubt we're going to eclipse our win record. There's no doubt in my mind we're going to hit at least 25 wins. And fortunately we're just not going to be as close to playoff contention as I was hoping. And maybe that was a bit of a pipe dream to be that good. I suppose it could have been. I'm not sure if it's just a matter of injuries or if with how I'm setting up the team strategy-wise, I'm just shooting myself in the foot and making dumb mistakes. That could absolutely be the reality of the situation. We do end the month of uh, January, though, on a very strong note, up to 20 and 31, although we do lose our first game of the month here in February, losing to Brooklyn. 
but 20 and 31 on the season. Let's take a look here. The current setup. So I don't believe we have any injuries that we're worrying about. Uh, Cameron Black is day to day. All right, so let's auto rotate that for the moment. So Dorikas is getting quite a bit of playing time. You see the number someone like Kato getting seven minutes. Although with that injury, of course, we'd want to drop the bench and not have any of those randoms play. So that'd be the better way to do it. I guess we'll take a look at the stats here. And it will be, let's see what we got going on here. So Arnold is an absolute monster, averaging 22 points a game, six assists, not too bad. Bohannon averaging nearly 20 points a game, five assists. Dario at 14, Dorikas at 13. So one could argue who should be getting a little bit more. Granted, Dorikas has the uh, higher shooting percentage right now, but of course, you know, a little bit lower. A little bit lower. I mean, you know, a little bit higher percentage chances, I'm sure, with Dario being a bit more of an outside shooter. Let's see. Anything else here? I'm doing 28 minutes a game. Defensively, not doing that bad either. He's not doing that bad, at least compared to some of the others. Marsh is averaging nine points a game, which is very good for our number one overall pick. You have Black averaging nine and a half, but again, he is a lockdown defender, so we're fine with that. Hopkins averaging nine points a game. McDaniel's at 8.4 since he's come back. Wesley McKinney, Cato, and then like guys like Fowler and Gomez, all those Sparks. Oof. Sparks has been uh, struggling. He is not a point getter at all. Just at all. But when it comes to uh, opponent field goals, opponent field goals attempted per game, uh, he's he's okay. He's okay. I mean, a four. Uh, he's okay defensively. I mean, at least based off of you know, pump field goal shooting percentage. There's still a lot we could do. I'm sure. And again, second guessing of everything. In terms of the power rankings right now, where are we? Of course, I'll take a look at the standings soon. We are not in the top 30 still. Currently 33rd. The Thunder have uh, actually jumped us. I'm very disappointed. In terms of division standings, we're not in dead last. So we have that going for us. In terms of the conference, of uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. So Minnesota's in 28 wins. So we're a little bit off the pace. It would be a bit of a miracle at this point for us to battle our way back. Is it possible? Maybe, but it would it would be a little bit tough, let's be honest. Clifford Meeks, Jesus. Well, to be honest, we might be looking at some of these guys sooner rather than later. The next episode, the next episode of this will either be, and I hate to end it on a strong note like this, but if there's anything that can be done to help turn our fortunes around over the final three months of the season. I want to do it, so I want your opinions, your suggestions on what to do, mainly when it comes to the system that we are currently running and subsequently the game plan settings for what we should be looking to do, how often we should be running our star players, when do we start risking overuse. Of course, the bench right now isn't anything amazing, but it's better than anything we have ever had. Is this team a playoff team? Probably not. Admittedly, probably not. But I think they could make it. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but it's like okay, you look at the Tampa Bay Sharks. We should be we should be better than them. I believe right now in the standings we're not. You look at the top 5 on St. Louis. We can compete with that. You look at the top 5 on the Spurs. We're right there. Top five on Phoenix. I mean, granted, they have DeAndre Ayton, but still, we're right there. Nelson Fletcher leading the charge for the Thunder. I mean, we're right there, at least in terms of the team. I mean, again, the depth is where it's hurting right now. But if you want to talk about whether or not this team could realistically push for a playoff spot, I genuinely think we could. It's just a matter of whether or not we are, whether or not we will, and whether or not I'm actively sabotaging the team by making some very dumb mistakes. But again, let me know. 
Looking forward to your feedback. Thank you guys, by the way, for the support with this series. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I get that for some of you who know what the hell you're doing and have been playing NBA for years and didn't just disappear and lose interest when it's like, ah, yes, the NBA, where it's the fucking Warriors against LeBron every year. <laughs> Which, again, I'm not hating on either team. I, I watch the finals. I watch them kill everybody in the playoffs. I really like LeBron. But... I just kind of burned out on the NBA for a while and got bored of the games, too. But damn it, we're back, and we're going to win something with the Sonics, eventually. Unless I'm just that bad at building teams with the Draft to Glory format, which could be the case. Thank you, guys. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.